Hello and thank you for inviting me to speak at the first EAG workshop on borehole geology in Asia Pacific. I'm Dr Melissa Johansson of Geoid Energy Limited, which specialises in borehole image interpretation. The title of my talk today is The Importance of Images in Sound Body Characterisation in Tidal Marine Settings, examples from the Malay Basin. The Mahakam Delta, located in Kalimantan, Borneo, provides a good modern-day analogue for some of the deltas formed in the Malay Basin during the Miocene. The Mahakam Delta formed a very low wave energy, moderately tidal, and a fluvial regime characterised by the lack of floods. The Mahakam Delta exhibits a very regular fan-shaped low-bait morphology with a network of fluvial distributaries radiating out from the Mahakam River, which are all inundated during spring tides. The continental core of Sunderland, as you see here on the diagram, comprises Sumatra, Java, Borneo and the Thai Malay Peninsula and Indochina and was assembled during the Triassic Indonesian orogeny and formed an extensive shallow sea during the Miocene. The location of Sunderland adjacent to the Himalayas and the Great Rivers of Indochina, including the Mekong River, flow from the north and a suggested link between the sedimentation and the rise of the Himalayas in Tibet. It has been suggested that the rivers such as the Mekong and the Shao Phraya cross Sunderland to feed the northwest Borneo margins and largely explain the amount of sedimentation there, up to 14 kilometres of Cenozoic sediments. Although there are local sources, as you can see from the northeast on the Malay Peninsula, that are feeding into the Penu Basin and the Malay Basin, with a tidal, tidal influx from the South China Sea from the west southwest. An analogue of this kind of basin setting is seen in modern day from the Sarawak's Rajang River Delta, which sees extensive tidal marine tidal channels um, with extensive amounts of mud sedimentation meandering across the plain. When we look at the schematic map of the fluvial tide transition zone, this area is a profound uh, spatial shows profound spatial changes between the terrestrial environment and the open marine shelf and we see the mix of the unidirectional current some salt wedge interaction um, up to 100 kilometers in shore unidirectional predominantly sand very little mud in the system when we get into the distributary channels of the uh, Delta, we see a mixed energy system uh, with what is known as the tidal maximum, where we have a concentration of tidal currents due to the funnel shape of the estuary environment. We see the fluvial system and we see the tidal currents come up shore. We have high sus suspended sediment load due to the mix of the salinities. And as we go out into the um, part outer part of the distributing mouth tidal bars we see the wave interaction winnowing the top of the sandbars but we see also the tidal currents and with some element of river currents during the the high uh, fluvial events when we look at the a fraser river british columbia which has obviously a high sediment input we see that change from the gravel to sand dominated in the interior with a decrease in fluvial influx to the zone of bed loan convergence, the BLC, where we have a mixed system and a strong tidal influence during that funnel, where we see gravel, sandstone and mudstone all in the same environment. And as we go offshore into the mouth bar, we see some clay and we see some sand as we um, have both a wave and a tidal regime and limited um, interaction. What is characteristic of this environment, of course, is the heterolithic clastic sediments. And we can see in the rock record, these are, can be seen as silty cross-bedded sandstones, clay laminated sandstones, flazer bedded sandstones, argillaceous bided sandstones, and argillaceous bitebated siltstone, to name just a few. And what we see here is a electrospectroscopy. We see a formation evaluation. We see the NMR. Um, and here we just see the end members of the, the formation, the borehole image. And we see that we obviously have the dominated sandstone 
clean sandstones in the fluvium. We see the clean mudstones um, predominantly offshore in the Pro Delta um, and the marshes. Uh, and then for a majority of that tidal mid area, we see heterolyphs. And these can be a, a good play. It could be clean sands. Um, it certainly is, is, should be calculated to reserve, but from characteristic open hole logs, um, it is unidentifiable. When you look at the rock record of the heterolithic area, we can see there are changes between the heterolyphs that are tidal influence, being a regular cyclicity between the neap and the spring tides, to the irregular fluvial where we have storm deposits interacting with the tidal currents. And we can see that with um, characterizing the thin beds, we can see the change between the heterolithics of the tidal to the heterolithics of the fluvial regime. When we look at the distributed channels up in the more fluvial dominated end of the sediments, we see fining up grain size, sharp erosive base for shell class, high angle cross bedding, dominantly seaward, high proportion of clean sands, little to no bioturbation, low dispersed fine material in sand body, paleosols, evident with rootlets towards the top, irregular heterolyphs, our average thickness of 25 meters, and evidence of a cyclic calcium cements possibly reflecting more estuarine conditions. And in this end of the system, if we look at this diagram, we have a high, uh, well, a low, sorry, sediment concentration, but a high um, tractional fluvial sedimentation with, with a unidirectional current towards the sea. When we look at the characteristics of these uh, sediments from the log data, um, average borehole thickness about 25 meters, we see cross bedded in the core. We see uh, the dip data, uh, although cross bedded with unidirection, we see um, finding up sedimentation from the NMR. We do see cyclicity, cyclicity of the calcareous sandstones, and it's possible that the estuarine incursions are cyclical from uh, the, 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 the wedges that form up the estuarine system. Um, and we, but ultimately we see these fine grain characteristics of cross bedding up into the um, maybe a more rippled or bitebated bi sand towards the top. When we look at the sandstones characterized by the tidal bars and the channels, we see we are over here in the middle of the sediments where we see a high suspended sediment concentration, uh, a low, low bulk grain size sandstone and it has a decrease in our fluvial input. And we have coarsen of grain size, erosional surface, mud class and herringbone, lateral accretion deposits, complex dip orientations, ebb and flood flow, dominant preservation of weaker flow, dominance of inclined heterolithic fasces oblique to flow, rhythmic bedding, restricted by dipation, coarse channel lags, stacked channel systems, five meter sand bodies. When we look at the sediments in, in the rock record, we have see here stacked averages of body sediments between three to five meters thick. We see this here, these little coarsening up stacked systems from the NMR. From the core, we see lots of micaceous mica or laminated uh, grains. Um, along the, lamin uh, the the ripple laminations, which are going to influence the logs. Uh, we've got the, the low angle ripple dips in the cross bedding dips as we go towards the top. And we see the coarse grain fasces here derived from the NMR. When we look at the, the characteristics of the sandstone mouth bars, we have a coarsening up grain size, gradational base and sharp top, Hummocky stratigraphic dips, low angle cross bedding, phaser bedding. 
abundant diverse bitubation, calcite cements observe, rhythmical heterolithics, fluidized mud layers, sand body units around 15 minutes, meters. And when we get down to this end of the, the characterization, we have bimodal flow. We also have a wave uh, element of reworking of the tops of the distributary mouths. Um, we have net sand going both inland and outward. We have suspended sediments decreasing uh, due to the wave activity on the distributary mouth. Our average sand bodies in these examples of the Malay Basin, about 15 meters. We see lots of bitubation in the sediments. We see a coarsening up grain size of, of, of the sandbar with bitubation towards the top. Low angle dips with a, only a cross bedded system up, but at the top, which is considered, considered rework by the, the marine setting. Some of the iron rich stratigraphic surfaces based on the elemental capture spectroscopy show there are iron rich surfaces. And these uh, seem to coincide with accumulated pisoids of rare skeletal fragments or laterite soils with the rootlets. And this is considered if a numerous um, ECS are logged that you make these baby correlatable across the, uh, the basin. When we look at just the summary of these, uh, the fascist groups, the fascist associations that can go into rock typing and rock modeling, we can see that the tidal fluvial distributary channel is our rock type one, the, the cleanest, which show this clear finding of signature. Uh, in the binary diagrams of the image logs, we see particular high resistivity, uh, cross bedding dipping predominantly in a unidirectional manner with high angle cross beds in this case to the southeast. Our rock type two, three, four are mouth bars and tidal flats, coarsening up signatures, a element of well predominantly binary in terms of of, of the sandstone uh, going up into a more um, a clay rich top with the bitubation um, with the ripples going to the southwest in this example and then we have our shoals a type three four five shoals tidal channels and tidal flats which are in the mid of the system uh, based on the complex interaction between the fluvial and marine system and you see here we have a, a much more green and yellow binary indication of the ripples uh, and clay laminated ripples. So to conclude the combination of core image logs, elemental spectroscopy and NMR identified robust deeper fasces, lithofasces and rock types suitable for static and dynamic modeling. Uh, distinct sand bodies and pelvic currents can be identified and interpreted beyond core using borehole images seismic time slices and fascist analysis used to build geological models. High resolution borehole images allow identification of patterns in thin heterolithic beds in order to interpret deep digital bodies. Complex dip data analysis was critical to differentiate tidal channels from mouth bars and iron rich surfaces are important horizons helping to correlate within multiple sand bodies and calcite cement cyclicity could reflect more estuarine conditions. And as we see here from this example, we see the more tidal influence channel is sinusoidal and we see the straighter channels are considered the fluvial distributive systems with a low sinuosity. And any questions please?